Welcome everyone to another installment of Clinton's Critters. My name is Clinton Neenhouse. I am the head naturalist with the Friends of Sax and Bog. Uh, and in this installment, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about foraging behaviors with great gray owls. Uh, a lot of our owls uh, hunt the same way. They use their ears, they hunt from perches, uh, and they're eating mostly the same things. However, great gray owls are very, very particular in what they eat. Much of the diet of a great gray owl is voles. Uh, those small mouse-like little critters that you may see trails of underneath the snow in the springtime. Uh, as that snow goes away, they make very cool little trails underneath the grass below the snow. And great gray owls are very, very good at catching them. The diet of a great gray owl is voles. In particular, two species of vole, at least in our area, Redback voles comprise most of the summer diet of this bird. About 90% of their diet in the summer is just this one species of vole. In the winter time, what we see is a switch. Redback voles stay in the bogs. They're a little bit harder to catch in the winter time with three, four feet of snow. But our meadow voles are out in the open areas on along the roadsides and those places. So in the winter time, 90% of that, that bird's diet, great gray owl's diet, is going to be meadow vole. Which is why when we come to the Saxon Bog looking for great gray owls, we look for them along the roadsides. There's a lot of voles though, and that's the nice thing for a great gray owl in the Saxon Bog. There's plenty of voles during the nesting season. There's plenty of voles during the winter season as well. How in the world can they catch their food, number one, especially when they're still on the ground? But what do they do if there's really deep snow? Great grays have a couple of cool adaptations. Number one, like all of owls, they use their ears. They're using that big, massive facial disc to focus sound to their ears, uh, which are offset, to help them triangulate prey underneath the snow. So when we watch a great gray owl on a perch, most of the time we're seeing it look around. If you're using your ears to hunt, you have to spend a lot of time listening. You may watch one bird look, look, look in an area, fly to another perch, stop, look, 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 or maybe it'll just sit on one perch for 25 or 30 minutes just looking and listening, focusing the sound, listening for voles underneath the snow. They can hear a vole under two feet of snow from about a hundred yards. So when an owl has focused in on a vole under the snow with its ears, they pop off the perch, might hover a little bit, but the cool thing about owls is they have really wide wings. Those wide wings hold a lot of air so they can fly very slow. If you're hunting with your ears, you're gonna have to fly so. So when we think about a facial disc, it's all about focusing sound. The sound's coming in, it's giving that owl a clue to where that prey item might be underneath the snow. Their ears are offset, which means sound is going to be uh, hitting one ear before the other, knowing then where that prey item is, even if they can't see it. And then plunges, shoots those legs down up to a foot and a half underneath the snow. It's feet first then head first if you're a great gray owl. Average weight of a great gray owl and a female is about two pounds, maybe two and a half pounds. They don't weigh a whole lot for as big as they are. And they can break through a snow crust layer or an ice layer uh, thick enough uh, that it could support the weight of a 175 pound person. But sometimes the ice is pretty thick on the snow 
uh, which may mean a collision. Uh, great grays have a lot of feathering in that facial disc. They can be protected a little bit. Great gray owls have incredibly long legs. Uh, they can uh, catch that prey item with those legs or reach down as far as about a foot and a half, 18 inches or so, underneath the snow to help them catch that vole. You'll sometimes see them be unsuccessful, and that's normal. For an owl or for any bird of prey, you're really only successful one out of every 10 hunts. But if they miss, those long legs can still reach around underneath the snow to maybe grab a vole uh, that they just missed by an inch or two. Perhaps they can still catch it by moving those feet. You'll get great gray owls sitting in the snow, almost like they're stuck. They look around, looking for ravens, they're looking for crows or blue jays or any other bird that might want to take that vole. They're going to make sure the coast is clear before they leave that hole, before they fly up to their perch. So after you've caught that vole, if you're a great owl, and then you swallow it down, it's in one gulp. That vole goes in, and then it goes down. Until next time, we'll see you in the box.